thank you for the opportunity so today my topic is about protablation and orbital atherectomy so before going to that i will give an introduction about vascular calcification vascular calcification is a pathological deposition of calcium in the vascular structures deposition of calcium can be secondary to inflammation vascular injury and repair so here you can see that the picture is showing that the fluoroscopy showing a, a stent boost actually showing the calcium in fluoroscopy and the ct showing a the calcified vessels so coronary calcification is age and sex dependent it's more common in men and um, in older than 70 years more than 90 percentage of men and 67 percentage of women so coronary calcification is seen in approximately one third of patients who undergo angiography and when we perform imaging it may go up to 75 percent so the risk factors of hypertension diabetic dyslipidemia chronic kidney disease obesity family history of having a coronary artery calcium and a high crp so what can the challenges with calcified vessels so calcified vessels uh, are usually called as complex lesions pc of severe calcified vessels is technically challenging and it's associated with worse outcomes because these calcification makes the vessels non compliant and they reduce the distensibility so it makes it difficult for the stents to expand and uh, prevent delivery of equipment and uh, you need high pressure balloons to dilate the lesions and it can even damage the stents so you can see the below image showing a stent fracture and um, uh, the fluoroscopic showing a under expanded stent so calcified lesions are associated with more complications and poor late outcomes so the uh, angiogram shows a uh, patient's angiogram which shows that we both severe calcified lad and rc which we treated with uh, hemodynamic support mm. so what are the methods to treat calcified lesions there are balloon based devices and atherectomy basically the balloon based devices used to create cracks and cuts to allow the expansion of stents while atherectomy devices used to debulk the coronary lesions and helps in expansion of the stent so this is a summary the, the important thing which we have to assess in calcium is the eccentricity depth thickness and the length of the calcium and based on that we have to choose the devices whether it can be atherectomy atherectomy devices to debulk the lesions or uh, balloon based devices to cut the next put a stent so what is rotational atherectomy rotational atherectomy is a device which has a rotating nickel plated brass burr it has a, a leading edge as thousands of diamond chips while the trailing surface is a smooth surface so it's powered pneumatically using a nitrogen gas and it has a console to set and adjust the speed and rotations so it's advanced over a 0.9 inch wire with advanced using advanced knob there will be a lubricating solution the burr comes in several sizes from 1.25 to uh, 2.5 the burr sizing is about 0.5 to 0.7 0.5 to 0.7 so for example if you use a 3 mm vessel we choose a 1.5 burr so it's 0.5 to 0.7 should be choose you should not oversize the burr uh, the rotation ablate um, rot rot rotable system burr has one axis on the rot one axis of rotation so it's important so it ablates a fixed diameter as the concentric mo mounted burr and <coughs> the ablated tissue is pulverized in 5 to 10 mm debris which is released into the distal coronary microcirculation so the the it follows the principle of differential cutting it only acts on non compliant tissues and the soft compliant tissues moves away so it will not cause damage to the normal layers in the blood vessels so main application of rotational atherectomy uncrossable calcified lesions and it acts exerts ablative action predominantly on the superficial calcium rather than the deeper calcium more con uh, concentric the calcified pattern uh, ra provides a good debulking the wire position is very important because the uh, it, the wire bias helps in ab uh, ablation of very eccentric calcium sometimes <coughs> contraindications wire and microcatheter uncrossable lesions last remaining vessel with a compromised left ventricular function saphenous venous grafts angiographic evidence of thrombus and significant dissection relative contraindications diffuse three vessel disease unprotected lmc disease severe lv dysfunction very angulated lesions so this is a case a 72 year old female with multiple comorbidities class 3 angina calcified vessels you can see that the balloon is could in cross so we had to take a microcatheter and put a rota wire and then we started with the rota pro 1.25 mm so you can see that the burr goes up to the middle of the lesion smoothly and then uh, uh, with the check angiogram we dilate the balloon and establish put a stent so you can see the uniform expansion of stent and a good flow in the vessels 
So the same patient we did a, uh, had a LED lesion too, which is also a calcified lesion. You can see the tramp tag appearance of the calcium. We couldn't even uh, pass a microcatheter, so we had the new rotor drive wire, which is which has a, a good talkability. Uh, we just wired with the uh, hugging the microcatheter, and we just wired it, and then we are able to take the mic uh, rotor burr. So it's a 1.5 mm burr, which was there. You can notice the angulation in the mid part of the LED. So we stopped just before the angulation. And uh, after that, we are able to put two stents after NC balloon dilatation as usual manner. So this is the final kissing and uh, final angiogram. You can see that the LED is nicely stented. So the other device is the other orbital atherectomy. It's also called as a Diamondback 360 degree uh, system. So the, it's a similar mechanism. It's a differential sanding mechanism to reduce plague. It also potentially minimizes damage to the um, normal layers, medial layer of the vessel. So this uh, drive shaft has an eccentrically mounted diamond coated crown which provides proximal and distal sanding to reduce occlusive material and restore lumen patency. So it acts, uh, uh, acts in the eccentric axis method. So you can see that uh, it acts in the eccentric axis method. It depends upon the speed of the rotation and the um, <coughs> With increasing ablation at increasing high speeds, it can increase the cross-sectional area. You can see that with slow motions and then with increasing the speed, it can further in increase the ablation. So producing larger cross-sectional areas. <coughs> so the unique crown shape and diamond coating enable uh, ablation of severely calcified lesions forward and backward. Rotational atherectomy, we cannot do it as backward, and we, so that the OA has an advantage that burr entrapment rates are too low. This device allows constant blood and saline flow and particulate flushing during orbit, which uh, facilitates cooling, uh, which is not in the rotational atherectomy. The thermal injuries are less. The average particle size is less than 2 micrometers, so the no flows, uh, reflow, uh, are less with this uh, system. So the precautions and contraindications are similar to the rotational atherectomy. So there's two landmark trials, Orbit 1 and Orbit 2 from India and US have demonstrated the clinical safety of OA system and it results in the approval of FDA. So these are the major differences between rotabulator and orbital atherectomy. Most of them I have highlighted in the previous slides. So this is a case. So you can see that it's a 72 year old male post CABG had an instemy. Angiogram one week back showed that the native triple disease and uh, flowing Y graft to LAD and uh, occluded limb to uh, with the LAD graft occluded, pattern limb to OM1 and distal PDA. So we did a, a, a orbital atherectomy to this patient, wiper wire was passed directly. This does not need a microcatheter exchange, so wiper wire can be passed directly. And then we did a orbital atherectomy with a <coughs> And then we did a 315 balloon dilatation and then a stent with the 348 mm. So you can see that there's a nice stenting. So take home message is there's no one size fits all approach to PCA. That work, works in all classes of lesion complexity. Failure to consider the utility, benefit and limitations of currently available atherectomy devices in complex or fibrocalcific lesions may lead to suboptimal procedural results. So there are four important steps. So in cal when we treat with calcified lesions, step one, angiographic assessment, step two, imaging, and step three, selection of proper calcium modification devices, and then uh, doing an NC balloon, and, uh, and then a proper imaging and stent optimization. So thank you, and I thank Apollo for providing this nice techniques to all patients. Thank you.